Okay, so hi everyone. Thank you very much for joining us for this presentation on being active. I'm Bridget Benlam. I'm a senior nutrition scientist at the British Nutrition Foundation. And so I'll be talking to you today about being active, why it's important to be active and different kinds of activities that you could get involved in. So many of you may have taken part in our survey that we did, which asked, how active are you? So I thought we could perhaps just ask you that now and see what you say. We're asking, how active are you in your opinion? So would you say you are A, very active, B, active, C, a little active, D, not very active, and E, not active at all? So if you could give your views, how active you think you are. So let's have a look at the results that we got on our poll that we did. I'm not sure if you know how many people took part, but actually over 27,000 responses were given for that survey. So we got loads of responses, which was great. For younger people, we asked how active you are at break time. And for the 5 to 11 year olds, uh, most of them said that they were very active at break times. And I'm going to give you the results for 11 to 16 year olds now. You can see that there are different percentages for the different age groups and for active, very active, a little active, not very active or not active at all. And you can see that the majority of people are either very active or active. So that's great news. So the people getting involved in these surveys are clearly saying that they're pretty active people. We know that people say that they're active or very active, but how much activity should you do per day? Okay, so this is our next poll. Do you know how much activity young people are recommended to do per day? Do you think it should be A, 15 minutes, B, 30 minutes, or C, 60 minutes? Let's see what you think. For young people, the recommendation is to do 60 minutes per day of activity. It's 60 minutes a day, so that's an hour of activity, but it doesn't have to be all at once. You don't have to do one hour of activity all in one go. It could be in chunks of 10 minutes or more at different times of the day. So you could do a bit before school, a bit during school, and a bit after school to add up to your 60 minutes per day of recommended activity. And when we're talking about how much activity you should do per day, we also need to think about how intense that activity should be. The moderate level of activity that's recommended for young people is should be enough to make you feel warmer and also to make your heart beat faster. But if you're doing moderate levels of activity, then you probably won't be too out of breath. If you're doing something that's a bit harder, then that will make you out of breath and you may not even be able to hold a conversation because you're breathing so hard because that activity is much more uh, strenuous. So we've heard the good news that lots of you are very active, but the bad news is that most young people are not active enough. So most children and young people are actually doing less than the 60 minutes of activity a day that young people are supposed to do. And the lowest level of activity is in teenage girls. And in girls, they're more active when they're younger, but as they get older and go to teenage years, their activity levels get lower. It's very important that for lots of children, they try to be more active. I'm going to talk a bit now about why it's so important to be active and the health benefits, the good things it can do for different parts of your body. So first we're going to talk about energy balance and I know that you've got some activities during this Healthy Eating Week about energy balance too so I know you'll be finding more out about this. When you are active you use more energy or kilojoules as we measure them in um, because we're doing more uh, activities, more work and your body needs more energy to do that. So that means that you are burning more energy and this helps you stay in energy balance. So being in energy balance means that the amount of energy you get into your body from your food is equal to the amount of energy that you're using up in kilojoules. So when you're in energy balance, it means that your body doesn't have any extra kilojoules left over. And this means that you don't put on any extra fat. And we know that having lots of extra fat in the body can cause problems with your health. Activity is really important because it can help us stay in energy balance and burn off additional kilojoules. Okay, so the next one we'll talk about is muscles. When you're active, you're working the muscles in different parts of your body. For example, if you're running, you're working all the muscles in your legs and your arms as you move them. When you're jumping, you're using your leg muscles. So depending on the different kinds of activities that you're doing, you're working different muscles in different parts of the body. And when you work your muscles, they grow and they get stronger. And especially when you're young, it's really important to grow strong muscles because that helps you stay healthy as an adult. 
So the more activity you do over time, your muscles get fitter, so they get better at doing the activity and the activity becomes easier. So you may have found this yourselves when you do activities, if you do a sport or something else that's active over time, then it may be really hard when you first try it, but over time it starts to get easier and that's because your muscles are getting fitter and better at doing the activity. So we just talked about energy balance, and when you build up muscle, it actually means that your body uses more energy, so it's using up more kilojoules, and this can also help you stay in energy balance. The next thing we'll talk about is your heart and your lungs. So um, the parts of your body that draw in the air as oxygen and help to pump it around your body. When you're active, you know from experience that when you're active, you breathe more deeply, you're that you're, you may become out of breath and you start to feel warm. And this is because your heart and lungs are working harder to take in the air and pump the oxygen around your body. When you're active regularly, you're working your heart and your lungs regularly and they get stronger and you get fitter. And this is really healthy for your body and can help you stay fit and well. Okay, so I've got a question for you now. Do you know what aerobic activity means? I wonder if anybody knows what aerobic activity means. But aerobic activity means that you're using oxygen, lots of uh, extra oxygen. So when, when you do aerobic exercise, it means that you're using more oxygen. So it makes your breathing harder, it makes your heart work faster, and you take deeper breaths. And this is a bit different from exercise, maybe if you're lifting up a weight or something like this, where it's working your muscles, but you're not really getting out of breath. So that's not aerobic activity. A aerobic activity is activities that use lots of oxygen and can make you out of breath when they're at a high level of activity. And this is important because I'm going to talk next about the recommendations for different kinds of activity and the recommendations that you have for your 60 minutes of activity a day are for moderate level aerobic activity. So these activities that use a lot of oxygen and make you breathe harder and your heart work more. Okay, so just before that, we'll talk about bones because activity is also very important for maintaining healthy bones. Now, as you probably know, when you are young, your bones are growing and getting stronger. So your bones are not only growing and growing longer, but they're also getting stronger so that they're getting more dense. Our bones develop over about the first 30 years of our lives. And particularly when you're young, your bones are growing a lot. And, and so it's really important to develop strong bones when you're young, because this helps them stay healthy when you're older. Now activities that involve um, you jumping up and down or running can help to make your bones stronger. So as well as getting all the calcium you need from your diet, doing activity can help build up your bones as well. So you've seen that activity is really important for energy balance, for your muscles, for your heart and for your lungs, and for healthy bones. And so activity is really important for your whole body. Okay, so we talked before about uh, aerobic activities and when we're thinking about what kind of activities count towards your 60 minutes of activities a day, we're thinking of moderate level aerobic activities. Now that means in practice that these are the kind of activities that make you out of breath a bit and make you warm and make your heart beat faster. But because they're moderate level, they don't mean that you're really, really out of breath so that you couldn't talk or hold a conversation. Uh, some examples of moderate level aerobic activities are walking fast, gardening, if maybe some of you help out in the garden, uh, aerobics, water aerobics, uh, riding a bike without too many hills, uh, doubles tennis, hiking, skateboarding, rollerblading, quite gentle cycling, uh, volleyball and basketball. These are all examples of some moderate level aerobic activities, but there are of course many more. I said that the, the 60 minutes of activity a day that you're recommended to do refers to this moderate level aerobic activity. But you may also do some activities that are harder, so harder level aerobic activities, and these make your body work harder so that you'll probably be quite out of breath when you do them. So these could be jogging or running, vigorous fitness DVDs if you try these at home, swimming fast, riding a bike fast or going up hills. Uh, singles tennis, football, rugby, hockey, aerobics, gymnastics or martial arts. 
And of course, there are many other different kinds of harder aerobic activities. But the main thing about these is that they will make you really out of breath. You're, you are obviously all aware that you need to do 60 minutes of activity a day. But as well as this recommendation, there's a recommendation about activities that strengthen bones and activities that strengthen muscles. And we were talking just a minute ago about um, the reasons why activity is important to strengthen bones and strengthen muscle. So some activities that can strengthen bones could be things like running, jumping, dancing and gymnastics. And things that strengthen muscles so that work your muscles like climbing and carrying. And it's recommended that children and young people should do these kinds of activities at least three times a week to help build up your bones and to strengthen the muscles as well. So we talked before about how many children are not active enough. So how can you be more active? And I've put some ideas down here, but I'll ask you for a bit more about some of these, some of these ideas as well. So you could take up a new activity that you could enjoy. And this could be a sport, but it doesn't necessarily have to be something that you'd think of as a, as a formal sport. So it could be something like dancing, for example. You could take part in sports, school sports teams or set up your own group could walk or cycle to school, and we'll talk a little bit more about active transport later. Could do activities in the park at the weekend, that could be with your friends or with your family. I don't know if this will be a very popular one, but you could help your parents with cleaning or gardening because this is something that actually counts towards your activity as well. You know that lots of video games mean that you just sit down, but you have active video games as well, so you could try some of these. So I just wondered if you'd like to talk about what your favourite ways to be active are and whether there are any sort of unusual things that you might do to be active. Activity in different places. So we do lots of different things during the day. We spend some of our day at home, some of our day maybe at school or at work for grown-ups. Uh, we might go outside, we might go shopping. So. I was just thinking about different ways that you could be active in different places. So I just wonder if anyone's got any ideas about how you could be active inside your house. Because you might think of activity as being more something that you would do outside or in a sports hall or at school. But there's probably things that you could do in your house to be active too. But it's good to think about, when you're trying to think about how you could be more active, to think about all the different activities that you might be able to do in different places because there may be opportunities that you hadn't thought about before. So one way of being more active is to take part in active travelling. So just wondering how people get to school at the moment. So I'll give you a little poll about this. So active travelling is a really good way to try and be active regularly because normally we have to go somewhere every day. So every day from Monday to Friday you have to go to school, other people have to go to work or to, to college. For doing activities like sports for example you might only do them once or twice a week but you have to get to school or to somewhere else probably five times a week. So if you spend a good few, few minutes being active on the way to school then that's going to add up and be quite a lot over the week. So active travelling is good because we usually have to go somewhere every day. OK, so obviously we're interested in nutrition at the British Nutrition Foundation. When you want to be active, it's really important to get the right food and drink. So your body needs all the essential nutrients and fluid to be active. And when you're being active, the main source of energy for your body is carbohydrate. Now, I wonder if you can name some foods that provide carbohydrates. Pasta, bread, cereals, potatoes, rice, chips. Okay, so lots of good answers. The one thing about chips is that they also, unless they're oven chips, they also contain a lot of fat, and fat isn't such a good source of energy for being active. Cereal, oh yeah, baked potatoes, French stick, pasta. Okay, so you've got lots of good ideas about foods that provide carbohydrates. So when you want to be active, you need to be having plenty of foods that provide carbohydrates. And this is normal healthy eating advice anyway, because we say that your meals should be based on starchy foods, like some of the ones that you've mentioned here. And particularly for athletes, say people who are competing in the Olympics, for example, they will eat a lot of carbohydrates before they do sport to provide um, the fuel for them to be active. 
As well as carbohydrate, which provides the fuel for you to be active, protein is also important for the body to build and repair your muscles. So we've talked about how activity affects your muscles, so it makes them grow and get stronger, and your body needs protein in order to build up muscles. So now a new question, can you give an example of a protein-rich food which provides lots of protein to have healthy muscles? Okay, so we see that meat, fish, very good answers. Uh, also eggs mentioned, they're also a very good source of protein. Also nuts as well, nuts provide protein too. There's one thing that nobody's mentioned just yet. That's, uh, that's from a plant rather than an Ah yes, lentils, yes, exactly. So things like pulses, lentils, beans, all provide protein. And these are really good for helping your body build and repair your muscles when you've been active. Okay, so as well as food, fluid is really important when you're active. So when you're active, your body needs more fluid to replace what you lose as sweat, and especially when it's hot. So you know that if you... Um, are very active if you run around a lot when it's hot then you sweat quite a lot and when you are active you need to replace that fluid so that your body doesn't get dehydrated. However unless you're doing lots of training every day you know, don't need a special sports drink with any extra sugar or salt. Just water is absolutely fine or things like squash or fruit juice with water in it. So unless you're training at a very uh, intense level like an athlete um, you don't need a special sports drink with anything extra, just water is fine. Talked a lot about being active. On the other side of the coin then is being inactive, so not being active. So many of us spend a lot of time sitting down these days. It could be at school, it could be watching TV, it could be working on the computer or playing video games, or it could be um, getting from place to place on a car, bus or train. This isn't good for our health because sitting down has a negative effect, a bad effect on the body. So of course we have to sit down for some of the day, so we have to sit down in classes and in school, but for the rest of the day it's a good idea to try and spend less time sitting down. Some ways to spend less time sitting down, you could watch less TV and do more active hobbies instead. You could walk or cycle instead of going by car or by bus. When you're out and about you could walk upstairs uh, instead of taking the lift or standing on the escalator. It may sound like a silly thing to say, but it's important for young people to be more active and less inactive. And it may sound like you're saying the same thing twice, but for example, if you sat down all day at school and then you went home and watched two hours of television and sat down all that time, and then maybe went out and ran around for half an hour. Now that half an hour of activity is good, and that's great to include in your day, but it would be even better if you did a bit less sitting down over the day. Um, so trying to be more active and less inactive, so sitting down less, is a good idea to make sure that you're active and healthy. Finally, I, hopefully you've all got this target tracker, and one of the things to, uh, to target is being active for your 60 minutes each day. We've got amount of activity for each day and hopefully you're all filling that in and making sure that you get your 60 minutes of activity every day. That's the end of my presentation, but I'm happy to talk about any questions you have if you've got anything that you'd like to add. How do you measure the strength of bones? I mean, doctors can measure your bones and they do a scan of your body and they can see how strong your bones are on the inside. Um, it's difficult to know how strong your bones are from the outside, but how strong your bones are will depend on a few different things. It might depend a bit on, um, on your family history, it might depend on the food you eat, and it would depend on how much activity you do. Now obviously none of us can change our family history, but we can make sure that we get the right foods and enough activity, and especially getting enough calcium from things like dairy foods, from green leafy vegetables or nuts, is really important for healthy bones, and especially when you're growing up. We've got another question about bones, Bridget, asking, when you grow older, what happens to your bones? Well, from when you're young, all the way through the time when you're a child, and when you're a young adult, so up until you're about 30 years of age, you have your growth spurt where you grow taller and your bones get longer but as well as growing longer your bones are getting stronger and stronger all the time so long as you've got enough of the uh, a good healthy diet that can help your bones grow strong. Your bones get stronger and stronger until you're about 30 years old 
and then after that your bones actually start to get a bit weaker so that's why it's important to get as strong bones as you can when you're young and then that helps your bones stay healthy when you're older. Thanks Bridget. We've also got a question, is there a best sport to burn fat in the body? Anything you do that burns energy and burns kilojoules will help you reduce the amount of fat in your body. And the good thing about being active is that when you build up muscle, this burns more energy too, and that will help you to burn fat as well. If you want to burn as many calories as you can, then doing aerobic activity, so the activity you talked about, we, we talked about before, which makes your, your breath get harder and your um, heart pump faster. When you are able to do that and build up your stamina so you can do it for longer, so for example, be, being able to, to go running for longer, being able to play football for longer, and that helps you burn off more fat. Thanks, Bridget. We've also got a question about stitches and cramps. Do you know why we get these when we run? Well, there can be lots of different reasons, but um, one reason why people often get a stitch is that they've eaten too soon before they go running or before they do other kinds of activity. So if you're going to eat before you do activity, it's important to try and eat well before. So if you're having a proper meal, it should be at least two hours before you do activity. And if it's something smaller, then it could be about an hour to half an hour. But it's important not to eat anything just before you go running because that can give you a stitch. And when it comes to cramps, sometimes that can be because you haven't had enough fluid and your body's dehydrated. So people often think about having a drink after they do activity, but you should think about having a drink before you do activity as well because it's a good idea to start off that activity feeling well hydrated and having had enough to drink so that you don't get dehydrated and get cramps when you're doing your running or any other activity. How much protein is good for your body? Well, we all need a bit of protein and it's a good idea to try and get a bit of protein into every meal. So um, a little bit in your breakfast, although maybe that's a bit more tricky if you're having cereal and things, but you can easily get some protein in the form of eggs or beans or meat or fish into your lunch and into your dinner. Now, a lot of people who do uh, things like sports and athletics, they try and eat protein uh, just after they've done their activity because that helps their muscles grow and repair after they've done the activity. And what the recommendation is there is that you have around foods that provide around 20 grams of protein. Now, if you have a food like a chicken breast, for example, then that contains lots of other things like water as well as protein. So typically, if you wanted to have about 20 grams of protein, that would be about three eggs or a small chicken breast or a fairly large portion of beans on toast. But it's still not massive amounts and you don't need to eat loads and loads of protein. Some people eat lots and lots of protein because they think their muscles will grow bigger, but actually that's not true. You just need a normal amount of protein in your diet as part of a healthy diet and that's your muscles to grow big and strong. Right, we've got time for one more question before we end the session today. Bridget, is there any one particular exercise which is the best exercise to do? No, I don't think you can say there's one best exercise, but it is good to do a variety of different kinds of exercise. So we talked about how there's a recommendation to do 60 minutes of activity a day. Now that's aerobic activity, so any activity that makes your heart pump more and your breath go faster, then that's great to do. And that it doesn't have to be anything in particular, it could be running, it could be dancing, it could be playing football. And as well as this, it's good to do activities that make your muscles and bones stronger. So things like carrying weights or doing exercise uh, or doing um, exercises like press ups or sit ups, it could be jumping or skipping or running to help your bones or anything else that helps to build muscle. So doing aerobic activity, bone health activities, and muscle activities uh, over the course of the week is a really good idea.